Yes, child. Feel the power of the blade flow through you. Become one with the dark side. Be my apprentice. Why, hello there, Anxious Cynic here from the Anxious Animations channel, coming back at you with a brand new my animator tutorial. Someone asked me recently about how to do a hologram effect, so I thought I would give it a try, and after a little bit of experimentation, I think I came up with a pretty cool effect, and I figured I'd share it with you guys. So if you wanna see how to make what I did in the opening scene there, stick around. So I thought in the spirit of the new Star Wars teaser trailer, I would go ahead and do this as a Star Wars theme, fight saber, hologram effect, whatever. Both effects are pretty much done the same way. So uh, let's just go in here into this little set that I made. Just dab down on in here and then we're gonna spawn in a character and try to make that uh, hologram effect. So I'll just go ahead and use the same kind of character that I used in the test there. Let's go ahead and bring in the Illager. Spawn him in. Don't know why I spawned way off in the middle of nowhere. And let's just bring him over here. As you can see I have snapping on with an 8 grid size. And that's a good start right there. So the first thing I'm going to do is this guy is probably not going to be casting a shadow because he's going to be emitting light. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn off cast shadows for this character. Now the most basic way that you could do this effect is just simply go to the color and reduce the alpha value on the character. So let's just say about 50%. And technically, you know, you could call that a hologram effect, uh, you know, because he's sort of there, sort of not. But of course, this might be confused for a ghost or something. So you might would want to add... Maybe a little bit of color to him. Let's do something like that. If you want blue, obviously you can use any color, but in Star Wars, I'm pretty sure they kind of have like a grayscale sort of uh, bluish tint to them. And uh, yeah, you could do something as simple as that if you're in a hurry and just wanna do whatever. But we can do a number of things to improve on this effect. So first thing we're gonna do is turn on glow. Just like that. We can't see it in here. Let me actually, I could do this, but my computer doesn't really handle the full screen in uh, real time rendering. So I'm gonna bring in a camera and let's just go ahead and drag this around. That's something to note if you're having trouble running Minimator, uh, when you wanna do the real time rendering like this, it's better to have it in a smaller screen cause it will take up much more resources if you're trying to run it in the 3D viewer here. So as you can see there, we've got some glow for our character doesn't look too terrible and you could leave it at that. That's a pretty good hologram effect, I would say. But uh, let's add a few more details to see if we can really bump this up a notch. So I'm just gonna go ahead and turn this off for now. And uh, what we wanna do, I'm gonna go over here. We're gonna spawn in a point light. You could use a spotlight probably, but I'm just gonna use a point light to make it easier. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and parent it to the Illager because we may want to you know, have this thing move around at some point or something like that. So just keeps everything nice and neat together. Bring it up kind of about midways into the character's body. Let's go to the light settings here and go ahead and save, saving frequently in case we have any problems. And I just want to make the light kind of similar to the color of the character. Let's do like that. Let me actually just turn this uh, real time rendering on, save again. And I'm going to go to the background settings. And I'm going to turn the sun down. I kind of want this to only be the only light that we have because I want to see uh, what our point light is doing in the scene. So another thing I'm going to do is go back to our Illager and I'm going to turn his brightness up because uh, he is technically emitting light. So uh, let's go ahead and just make that about 75%. Obviously, that can be whatever you want it to be. And there you go. We're getting a, a fairly decent hologram effect there. That's not too bad. Uh, and what we want to do probably, something that I did in the opening scene there, is I may want this to kind of have a flicker because holograms kind of look lame if they're just there. I mean, he could be a ghost or anything. So we want to kind of uh, give the impression that he's kind of an electrical thing. You know, he's an emission of light and light's not always constant. So uh, what I'm going to do is for the point light and for the Illager himself, I'm going to adjust the color. So for the, the light here, I also think this might be a bit too bright. So let me, I'm gonna select all these keyframes. 
Let's bring this down to like 150, maybe less. Yeah, maybe like a hundred, something like that. Cause you know, holograms aren't that bright. Come on. I'll probably just leave the fade size as it is. I think that looks okay, but you know, depending on your scene, you may want to adjust that. So what I'm gonna do is go to this keyframe here and let's just drag this over and I might make it slightly darker, something like that, perhaps. And I might just have a couple of variations here. Go to this one, kind of lighten it up a bit. Then this one will go a little bit darker again. So what we get is this flickering effect. And of course you don't have to, but you can actually just right click, select all those, right click on it. And I don't know, we'll just apply a transition to it. Maybe that one. Doesn't really do a whole lot due to how fast these keyframes are going, but we'll just go with that. And let's go ahead and save it. And what we'll do now is actually go up to the Illager himself and do a similar thing. But this one, I'll probably just keyframe the alpha value. I'm kind of wondering if that one's a bit too strong. Let's see if we, uh, I don't know, maybe 40, 45%, something like that. We'll go with 45 as is kind of like the, the base range and then kind of have them tipping around. Maybe go up to like 48, 49. On this one, we'll bump it down like 43, and then back up to like 49 again. So what we get is this nice little flickering effect. And I think that looks pretty decent. And uh, what we're gonna do is be copying these keyframes and extrapolating them over time to uh, get a more long-term effect. But for now, we're just gonna get these keyframes set up so that we can then later do that with every element. So that looks pretty good to me, but there's one other element that I wanna add that I think really helps make this look even better. So what I'm gonna do is go over here, I'm gonna spawn in a cylinder, hit okay or create on that. And just like everything else, I'm gonna parent this to the illager. And just like so, let's go ahead and save. And let's see here, we wanna turn the brightness up on this as well. We can get in here, yeah, finicky. All right, then we'll do that. Let's go to scale. Let's drop this down so we can scale the individual parameters here. And that's not the one I want. I want to scale this. I'm just gonna kind of bring it 0.65, something like that, just so it kind of matches his body a little bit better. Let's bring it out a tad, maybe 1.2. Eh, that's a bit too far, 1.5. I think that's okay. And then we'll just scale it up to go up to the top of his head, 2.2 or 1.5, 2.15, I think that works okay. Only his nose is sticking out now. That's terrible. All right, so now what we're gonna do is the same thing. We're just gonna, don't really know exactly how far to go. Let's maybe try 30. We're gonna turn off cast shadows for the cylinder as well. We're gonna turn on glow. As you can see, that's there. We may actually need to turn this way down. Let's see. And we want to also do, I think, only render glow. There we go. So we have glow, only render glow. And we're gonna do something like that. I don't know, maybe like 12% for the high. And then once again, we're just gonna go in here and just kind of keyframe some of this, maybe like 6%. And bump it up to like 9%. My computer fans are going nuts seven and uh we'll just see what that looks like let's go ahead and save that's not too bad no i think this uh this starting point of 12 percent on the alpha for the cylinder is probably a bit too high but that's where we will want it maybe when it first comes up so i'm just gonna go ahead and grab these i'm gonna drag this out to about one second we're at 30 frames per second so that's how we want this to go i'm gonna go ahead and turn off rendering for now Let's go ahead and save. And I'm gonna go ahead and keyframe the scale of our illager to kind of have it come into light as a hologram, as you may have noticed in the test, for example, that I did in the beginning. So what I'm gonna do is on this first keyframe, I might drag the alpha down a bit more. Let's just say 10%. 
and let's just go ahead and turn this all on so we can scale the all the axes at once and bring it down like so just kind of lower whatever and we'll go ahead and save that and then what you get is he comes up and does like that but we may want this to happen a bit sooner so I'm gonna right click on this and let's give it this ease out circular transition Beep. that looks like a pretty good uh, animation to me for a hologram coming into view and what we'll also want to do is have the point light start out being way low like not emitting any light let's just say like zero and we're gonna go ahead and give that uh, the same transition and see what that looks like all right not too terrible so we have the thing coming into view and then he starts to flicker and I think that's pretty much what we want. So let's look at that with the rendering on and see what we got. Just like so. There we go. And as you may recall, we have this first keyframe set to 12%, which I think is a bit too much. So what I'm gonna do is actually drag this back. So it's kind of like he he's really bright as it first comes in. And then on this one, let's see what this next one is, 6%. We're gonna have it go down to say five. Then it'll pop up to six. And let's change this one to go back down to five again. Let's maybe have this one go back up to eight. So that way we get kind of change this around since our flickering is a bit different here. So we go five, eight, five, seven. And then we'll just kind of have that loop. Maybe that'll be a good number. So that may be going a bit fast, you know, I don't know, you can always adjust this timing and whatnot. I'm going to go ahead and change the transition on these to be similar. That one's the same. And this one is not, so let's go ahead and change this one to be similar. Do like that. So now they're all on the same kind of transition there. You can kind of see here that maybe that's not looking the best so you might would want to just change the transition type since this is happening so fast let's just see what we get on linear yeah okay that works better but you know depending on how far spaced out these are you can have the transition be whatever type you want it to be so we basically have our animation there comes into frame and then he starts flickering so what we want to do is we have all these keyframes here for the flickering i'm just going to hit Control c to copy or you can come down here and hit this button right here. And then we're going about every five keyframes. So I'm just gonna have my mouse hovering like this cursor here or the timeline marker doesn't matter. It's wherever your cursor is floating. So I'm gonna hit control V to paste and then that'll paste it wherever. If you're using these buttons down here to paste, I think it's this one right here, then it will put it where this marker is. So if I put it on 70 and I hit paste, then it'll paste it where that is, but you know, obviously using control C and control V is a bit faster. So we'll just do like that a few times. There we go. And for our final scene, we have, let me go ahead and click off of everything so we can just focus on what's happening down here. There we go. So I would definitely tweak this, the, uh, the brightness here, I think, it's on our cylinder maybe, or one of these elements, maybe the brightness of uh, this guy being at 49% or something is uh, perhaps a bit too much. Some of these may be overlapping in different ways. Another thing that you can do, uh, whoops, yeah, not zoom out so far, is uh, over, you know, these are all overlapping. So let's just kind of mix this up a bit, like have these keyframes not all line up as much so it'll be kind of uh, a mixture of things doing what they're trying to do here this isn't like that much of a variation in timing but as you can see there with them not all doing the same thing over and over at the same time it can kind of vary it up and make it look a little bit more random a little bit more flickery and better that's uh, my opinion anyway so we're pretty good on that. Uh, the last thing I would touch on is I already have my settings set up for this effect. But if you go over here to the settings cog, you go to render and you go to your glow settings. This is what I have. Like the glow is on default, which is 100%. And then I have glow fall off turned on. 
and both of those to 150 percent if i turn that off and you'll see there the glow isn't quite as pleasing at least not in my opinion i want it to have more of a look like this so uh that's the settings i used to get the effect that i uh wanted how i wanted it to look for this example but uh you can obviously turn it up or down however you want it to be whatever suits your needs and your taste but i think that's going to be it for me hope that was helpful hope you guys learned something hope you liked the effect if you did make sure you hit that like button make sure you leave a comment let me know what you think share this video with your family and your friends and your pets and subscribe if you're not already so thanks for watching guys i'll see you in the next video Thank <laughs> you.